1 Corinthians 2. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not implausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it's not a wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of the, this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him, at these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Well, chapter 2, Paul uh, continues the theme of the contrast between worldly wisdom and the wisdom of God. Uh, this church at Corinth uh, was uh, uh, lots of problems. We'll see those throughout the, the letter, but the, the kind of root problem seems to be their worldliness. And Paul starts by redirecting them from uh, kind of running after worldly values to coming back to um, uh, the values of uh, the cross. And so um, part of that is uh, reminding them that when he came, he didn't come like a kind of popular first century celebrity preacher. Uh, he didn't come, verse one, with um, uh, lofty speech or uh, wisdom. Uh, his message could be reduced, verse two, to uh, nothing except Christ and him crucified. Now, it doesn't mean that he didn't speak about anything else, but that was at the heart. Everything that he spoke uh, on was kind of uh, coming out of that foundation of Jesus Christ and him uh, crucified. And he didn't come as uh, a very polished um, speaker, engaging, lots of jokes and things like that. No, uh, he came in weakness and in fear and in much uh, trembling. And his speech, verse 4, was not in plausible words of wisdom. Uh, now, th this doesn't mean that Paul kind of deliberately came and spoke incoherently or anything like that. But it's just that he didn't adopt the uh, popular uh, techniques in the first century that the, the rhetoricians were using. So in other words, he didn't take the, the message of the cross and package it up in a way that people um, uh, would be more likely to hear it. So I think there is a challenge here and there's a line that we have to make. Paul does you know, you read his letters and he does try and persuade. He's happy to uh, use illustrations from uh, pagan poets. He does that in Titus. Uh, he uses kind of imagery. Uh, so it's not that he's privileging kind of incoherence, but he's not going to package uh, the gospel up so that it appeals to the value systems of uh, first century Corinth. And uh, that is always the danger that we do. We, we try to make the cross and uh, the message of the cross look like it makes sense to people in terms of it shares the values. Look, you know, the Christian message is, uh, is just what you believe. No, that's, that's not uh, what we're doing. The, the Christian message confronts, uh, it even destroys the wisdom of the world, uh, Paul says in, the, in, in chapter one. So there should be a kind of grinding disjuncture between uh, the message of the cross and uh, the values uh, of the world, uh, even as we try to explain it in a way that people can understand. There's nothing wrong with doing that, uh, but uh, trying to explain it in a way that will make it more acceptable, that's the problem. And that's what Paul is refusing uh, to do, uh, because uh, Paul is, is relying not on um, uh, the gospel being packaged in a particular way that will make it more acceptable. No, he's relying on uh, the spirit. Uh, verse 4, and he's going to continue talking about uh, the Spirit in the rest of the chapter, so that uh, their, uh, their uh, faith, verse 5, might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So if he presents the gospel in a way, uh, plainly, clearly, as clearly as he can, but not trying to make it more palatable, well, then he knows that if people um, turn to it, then they, they, uh, that is the result of uh, God's uh, work. And so, again, he's clear that this wisdom that he's uh, presenting is the wisdom of God. It's not uh, the wisdom of the world. And uh, no one can accept it. No one can penetrate it. No one can understand it without uh, the work of the Spirit. 
Uh, verse 11, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of uh, God. And as Christians, verse 12, we've received the spirit that is from God, who is from God, that we might understand uh, the things freely given us uh, by God. And so we impart in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit. So there's a spiritual dimension to our preaching. And uh, that means, I think, that there should be a sort of otherworldly nature to our preaching. Ultimately, we're depending on the spirit to convince people. Uh, we're not depending on our packaging. We're not depending on our presentation of the gospel, having a, uh, a you know, an, an engaging sense that will uh, click with people of the world. Now, even as I say that, I know that we've, we've got to be careful uh, to not go too far the other extreme. And uh, we just uh, explain the gospel in ways that people can't understand. That's not what Paul is saying. It's not so much about understanding. It's about value. It's about saying, uh, pr- packaging the gospel in a way that worldly people will will accept it. Now, that's what he's refusing to do. He's going to clearly communicate the gospel using words uh, that people uh, can understand. That's why we communicate the gospel in English. We don't uh, stand up and speak in um, you know, Koine Greek uh, from, the, um, from the New Testament. No, we want to be clear, but ultimately we depend on the spirit to convince people of the truthfulness of uh, the gospel. Uh, and because we know that verse 14, the natural person, uh, uh, that the non-Christian cannot accept the things of, of the Spirit of God. They're, they're folly to, to, uh, to them. They're spiritually discerned. We need the work of the Spirit. Uh, but as Christians, uh, we uh, wonderfully have been given the Spirit. We've been given the mind of Christ so that we can understand uh, the things of uh, the Spirit. So in our preaching, in our teaching, we aim for clarity and, um, Paul can talk about wanting to persuade people in uh, 2 Corinthians 4. Uh, so it's not, not that we don't want to persuade people. It's not that we don't want to be clear. But ultimately, we depend on the Spirit. We don't depend on uh, trying to show that the, um, uh, the, the gospel is somehow uh, acceptable to the world. Uh, no, we, uh, we don't. But by doing that, we, we then create worldly Christians. We show that the gospel confronts the world that it's different from the world. We're almost pe- calling people to a different world. We're sort of saying, this is what the gospel uh, looks like. This is what it looks like to live in this world. And the only way that people can embrace that uh, for all our clarity is uh, the work of uh, the Spirit of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the Spirit. We thank you that he opens our eyes to understand uh, you and your ways. And Father, we pray that we would depend on him even as we uh, communicate the gospel and uh, that we would not uh, try and simply uh, package the gospel in uh, worldly ways uh, that would empty it of its power, but that we always depend on the Spirit. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.